Hey guys, Sean from Trail Grid Pro. Today we are super excited to introduce our newest plug and play bundle for your 2014 to 2021 JBL Amplified Toyota Tundra. So our kicker plug and play bundle will give you more power on your factory or aftermarket speakers, you'll get richer and fuller sound and more impactful bass out of your factory or aftermarket subwoofer. In our bundle, you'll receive Kicker 660.5 five channel amplifier, our Trail Grid Pro exclusive JBL amplifier bypass already pre-terminated for you. You will also receive all the necessary installation materials. You'll have your Power and ground wire already pre-terminated for you. You'll receive speaker wire for aftermarket subwoofer. You'll receive six channel RCAs with the remote wire, as well as a RCA Y adapter, just in case your aftermarket radio has one RCA pre-out for your subwoofer. So let's go over our Trail Grid Pro JBL amplifier bypass. So for our 2020 Toyota Tundra, we're gonna be using the factory sub. Our JBL amp bypass allows you to repower the factory sub, or you can use your or any aftermarket sub. We have our front speaker wires and our rear speaker wires. So let's go over some of the tools that are gonna to be necessary to complete the installation. We're gonna need some sort of cutters or dikes, a panel removal tool, a impact gun or socket with a 14 millimeter socket on it. We're gonna need a screw gun or a small impact gun. We're gonna need a three millimeter Allen head wrench, a Phillips head screwdriver, a light, a 10 millimeter socket, have a razor knife or a razor, electrical tape, We'll need a piece of sandpaper or something to remove any extra paint for our ground, as well as wire ties to clean up any loose wires. So now that we've gone over all the tools necessary, let's get into the installation. So before we begin the disassembly, there are three things we need to know to be able to use the JBL amp bypass. One, JBL logo on the door. Two, the JBL amplifier underneath the passenger front seat. And three, the factory subwoofer behind the driver's rear seat. If you have all three of those things, you're good to go. So now we can begin with the disassembly. So I'm gonna start on the passenger side of the truck. I'm gonna get the seat bolts pulled out and lean back. And then I'm gonna go ahead and remove the kick panel and the trim panel along the inside of the door. So to remove the seat, we're gonna use a impact gun or socket wrench with a 14 millimeter, and we can go ahead and start removing those. Front two are out. If you have power seats, which you should, you're gonna slide the seat forward, go to the back side of the seat, remove the two plastic covers. Now those two plastic covers are in there with a locking pin, so you're gonna have to kind of wiggle them off that pin may stay in. We can always remove that after we get those off. So let's go to the back seat, get the two 14s out and lean the seat back. So now we need to remove two plastic covers to access the two rear bolts holding the seat in place. And usually you can just pull these, pull these straight off by wiggling back and forth. And as you can tell, the clip stayed in not a big deal we can get that out later set those aside pull those off and remove these two 14 millimeter bolts so now that those two bolts are out we can go ahead lean the seat back to access our factory jbl amplifier so you can absolutely do the install with the seat lifted up and tilted back. Uh, if you want to remove the seat entirely, I'm gonna show you how to do that now. So there's gonna be three plugs. 
on the bottom of the seat. Just gonna press in on each one and remove. So the gray, plug, unplug that, and then unplug the white one. And then you're gonna have a wire hold here. So you're just gonna grab your, your panel popper tool and just pry that out. There we go. Just set that down to the side. Then we're gonna go ahead and grab our seat and remove that entirely. So now our seat is out of the way. We can go ahead and remove our passenger sill plate as well as our passenger side kick panel. So for that, you can either grab your pry tool or just gently reach up under and release all the pins. And they will pop up so that is out of the way and on the kick panel there's gonna be one little hold on a bolt so you're gonna to want to just turn that and take that off and then just remove you're gonna to want to push out and then pull back so it looks like we lost both of our little pins in the kick panel One's here, the other one is up here behind the ground. We'll go ahead and grab them out before we put it all back together because we know they're not going anywhere. From there, we have our factory amplifier. So for this, there's three pins holding the plastic cover to it. You can just gently pull up on those to remove the plastic cover. There's your factory amplifier. Now there is a bracket that holds it into place. So there's three 10 millimeter bolts holding the factory amp to the body of the truck. Here, here, and one towards the rear right here. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and unplug the factory amp first. So just pressing in on the tab and removing and removing slide that out of the way and then we can grab our 10 millimeter socket get those three bolts out get this amp completely removed and it just just lifts up and out of the way so once you have the amp removed you can either take those three bolts put them back into position or save them with the amplifier because we are not cutting any of the factory wiring you'll always have the ability to reinstall your factory jbl amp when you sell the vehicle turn it in off a of lease however so i'm actually going to go ahead and throw the three bolts back into position so i don't lose them So now the three bolts are in, we can go ahead and move to our head unit, which is a requirement because we need to get the source material from the radio to our new amplifier to then give it to our speakers. So we're going to go ahead, get the radio out, show you how to run the RCAs as well as the remote wire and get them down here and then move on in the installation. Now we need to gain access to the RCA and remote connections on the back of our aftermarket head unit. So to do that, we're gonna remove our bottom panel first by sticking a, a pry tool in there and just gently pulling until it releases. Then we can just pop out our climate controls and unplug those by just pressing in and removing. And then we're gonna have four 10 millimeter bolts holding in our radio and the rest of our kit so they're here here and then two back in so let's go ahead and get those out start with the front two there's two and this one is way back in there so you may need an extension
all four are out. You can gently pull that out. And then we'll grab the two 10 mils that were left. And if you have a towel, fender, cover, anything like that, just set that radio on there like such. So on this particular model, the front is in the middle. The rear is on the top. Subwoofer is on the bottom. So when you see RCAs, red usually means right. White means left. So on our RCAs that we send you, will be marked as FL for front left, FR for front right, RL for rear left, and RR for rear right, and the sub will just say sub on it. For example, we have FR and FL, so we'll go ahead and plug in our right hand one to the red, and our left hand one to the white, Go to the next set, this is sub, so it'll say SL and SR. Now again, if you remember in the beginning, if your aftermarket head unit only has one RCA pre-out for the subwoofer, this is where you're gonna plug in your, your Y adapter to here and then plug the single set in. Since I have two, I can just plug these in. So again, sub right will go into the red, sub left will go into the white, then we have one more left, and that is our rear RCAs. Right rear, left rear. Again, plugging the right into the red and the left into the white. So now you have one more wire that we have to hook up behind the head unit. That is our remote turn on wire. That is what will actually turn the amp on and off when we turn our truck on and off. So we'll go ahead and plug that in next. Male and female bullet connectors already on our harness. If you have a different aftermarket head unit, you may need to add a bullet connector to make the connection. Get them plugged in, make sure it's tight. To run the RCAs in this vehicle, we're gonna go across the top of the dash and then drop down on the passenger side. So I'm gonna show you how to do that next. So we're gonna grab our RCAs and just gently get them up above the vent here in this cavity. So we're gonna get those in, and I'm gonna show you how to remove this trim piece as well as this trim piece to run them over and get them dropped down. So to remove these two trim pieces, start at the top, get underneath and just pull the release, set that to the side, then you can pop this one off. You may need a panel popper to remove. And it'll release. Set that to the side. So now you can see in here we have our RCAs. So we can reach in, kind of pull those through for now. and then just slowly fish them all the way through. Don't have to worry about the airbag. The airbag will actually, God forbid, comes up from the top, not from the front. So from there, you're gonna look down in and you're gonna see a little tiny crevice in the back. You're gonna fish your wires down. So you're actually going over the steel support for the dash of the truck. And then reach up under the dash and you can gently pull them down. Once we have our RCAs dropped, we can go ahead and just loosely run them in the wire chase. So you can either run them in between like so, or you can pop these up by just lifting up on them like that. 
and running them in there and just closing them back we'll leave them open for once we run our power wire so again we're not wire tying anything quite yet but we can get our RCAs run in and up so we have them ready as well as our remote wire kind of sitting there kind of ready to go and again we'll do all of our wire tying at the very end so we make sure we have enough slack to get everything plugged in so from here we're going to go ahead and get the radio back into place and then we're going to move to the front of the vehicle get our power wire run so let's get that radio back in so before we get the radio placed back into the dash we just want to double check make sure all of our rcas are plugged in our remotes plugged in any external accessories usb gps antenna adapters everything is placed and put on the radio or plugged into the radio we can go ahead and slide everything back in being careful not to block any of the bolts okay that's back in now we start with the two lower bolts and then we'll get the farther bolt in and then the bolt on the driver's side Take your time while you're doing it, because if you drop a bolt, you're probably gonna have to pull the radio back out. Once the radio is secure back into place, you can go ahead and grab your climate controls, get those plugged in and put back into position. And then go ahead and plug in your lower piece. So now the radio is all back together. Again, we won't do anything with that side trim until the amplifier is done and installed and we're done wire tying everything so radios back together now we can move up to the hood start our power wire run and get that into the vehicle and into the area where the amp's going to go so before we begin running our power wire to our amplifier go through some of the stuff i have out here some wire ties razor knife some side cutters electrical tape some sort of wire fish or metal coat hanger if you have one of those can of pb blaster wd-40 dawn dish soap something to help lubricate to get it through as well as obviously our power wire and our fuse holder so to begin i'm gonna start near the battery and i'm gonna run the wire up and around and then end up down in the passenger side here there's a nice large grommet that we're going to cut through and then go into the vehicle like that. So the side with the tubing on it is going to be here with the fuse holder up near the battery. So we're going to grab the opposite end and begin to run that around. So we're going to go behind and we want to basically keep it out of the way of any heat source or getting, you know, touching anything that's extremely hot so it doesn't burn through. So we'll start here. Run it behind. Like such. Now we want to leave, depending on where you want to put your fuse holder, kind of get that figured out ahead of time. You know, they give you about eight inches. So something in that general area. If you want to have it on this side, you can have it something like that kind of hard to get it to go straight across so I'm gonna leave mine about there so for this install I'm gonna get them I'm gonna wire tie the power wire to the brake lines that are in the the back so go ahead and run your wire ties up and now we're not gonna tighten them all the way currently So now that our power wire is, for the most part, near the grommet we're going to go through, we're going to show you where to go through. So the grommet is right here. 
on the passenger side of the upper part of the firewall. So what we're going to do is kind of try to stay away from the wire cluster and just make a small slice vertically in that grommet. And then we're going to take our wire fish or hanger or whatever we have and then just gently slide that through and you're going to hear a second pop. Now it may take a little bit to kind of get it. So now that we're in, we're just going to make sure that we have free motion all the way through. So we'll grab our power wire, finish running it behind the auxiliary fuse panel, getting that all pulled through. Then we will tape it on to our wire fish. We want to make it as small as possible making sure we tape it extra tight at the top so it doesn't come through or pull off. If it does, it's not a big deal. Just stick the, uh, the wire fish back in and try it again. So, but this is where your PB Blaster WD-40 Dawn dish soap will come in handy. Just give it a little, little squirt to get it a little lubrication and we can slide our wire fish in getting it started into the into the first grommet and then we're going to go to the inside of the vehicle and pull the wire fish through so now i'm into the cab of the vehicle so sometimes this helps to have a second person just kind of guiding that wire but you'll see that wire come into the vehicle here So you want to make sure you have enough, but you're not kinked up. We'll give ourselves a little bit of slack here so we can wire tie to there. So now we can go back through, tighten up the wire ties and wire tie the passenger side by the grommet to make sure the power wire doesn't move on us once we start making our connections. So we can go through, cut off all of our extra wire tie. Now that we have our power wire run along the engine bay and into the cab of the vehicle, we'll go ahead and go to the inside, finish running our power wire to our amp area, as well as get our amp ready and hooked up with the JBL amp bypass. Then we'll come back out under the hood to hook up our fuse block and our power wire to the battery once we're all done with everything else. So now we're in the passenger side of the vehicle. We're going to finish running our power wire through our wire channel and then get that up and close to the amplifier. So we're just going to go ahead and unwrap the tape off of our wire fish. So get that tape removed off of the wire fish. Let's get our wire fish out of the way. So now we're going to run it down through the channels. So you can either go under, over, through, however you so choose. Again, not wire tying anything until we're done. Run that up and through. So then next we're going to grab our ground wire and we're going to lift up. And right here is a factory style ground. You can use that. You can make your own ground, but we're gonna go ahead and just use that factory ground. That's a 10 millimeter. So go ahead and remove that 10 millimeter. Grab our ground. Get it started back in and retightened. Run that through there. So now we have our ground wire, our power 
power wire, our remote wire, as well as our RCAs. Now we just need some speaker wires. So for that, we have our Trailgrid Pro JBL amp bypass. Now the kicker will come already pre-terminated with some forks on there with your factory amp plugs. The thin white we will not use. You can tape that up, slide that underneath. So that'll leave you with a 12 pin and a 10 pin. So white will be your 12 pin that will plug in, click. And then the blue will be the 10 pin. Plug that in and then you can put that underneath. Keep that out of the way. And then we can go ahead and start wiring up our amplifier. We'll go ahead and wire up the RCA side. So we have amp one, that will be front. Amp two will be rear. And sub will be for our factory subwoofer. You have your gain controls on this side. So we'll go over those once we have it all installed. But as you recall in the beginning of our video, all of our RCAs are marked. So we have front, left, and right. And again, left is gonna go into the white. Right will go into the red. And then we have subwoofer left and right. That will go into sub. So gray into white, blue into red. Last but not least, rear left, which will go into white. And our rear right, that will go into red. Then we can get that just kind of sat down there for now. Now you can run it any way you choose. You can run it out this hole. You can run it out of, you know, here. Doesn't matter. Completely up to you. Ultimately, the amplifier is going to sit about there in this installation. But I have to pick it up and move some more stuff around either way. Next will be power and speaker wires. First we have ground, black cable. Open this up a little more. Then the other big side is our power side. So we can get those two in. And we're gonna use a three millimeter Allen head to get these tightened down. So let's just check them. Yep, they're not coming out. Then we have our blue remote wire that was attached to our RCAs. That will go right in the middle. Same three millimeter to go ahead and tighten that Allen head down. That's not coming out. So next we have our speaker wires. Left front on the top, right front on the top and then left rear, right rear, and then the last two top and bottom are for your subwoofer. Now, if you're using an aftermarket subwoofer, we will send you the wire to run. You'll just hook your yellow onto the top, brown onto the bottom, and then you're, you'll run that to wherever your subwoofer is gonna sit. In this case, we're gonna use our factory JBL subwoofer and reamplify that. I will go ahead and loosen these all up. So now with this particular amplifier, it's easier to start on the bottom, get those hooked up first, then move to the top. So all of our colors are similar to any aftermarket radio. So we have left rear, which is green, and then green with a black stripe, and then right rear, which is purple and purple with a black stripe. So let's go ahead and get our left rear hooked up first. Figure out, make sure we know which ones are ground, which is this one, so we can get that in there. That one in there. And then there. And there. So now what we have is left rear positive, left rear negative, right rear positive, right rear negative. 
So now that those are in, go ahead and tighten those down. So now we got all those in. So now we're going to go ahead and grab our larger gauge black wire. That will go in the bottom. So that will be our subwoofer negative to reamplify our factory JBL sub. Then we can move on to the top. So we're going to do that the other way. So we're going to start with the larger gauge red and go into our subwoofer positive here. We'll get that tightened down and then we can grab the rest of our wires. So we have left, left negative, right, right negative. So there's our left positive, our left negative, then our right positive, and our right negative. So again, left front positive, left front negative, right front positive, right front negative. So we can go ahead and get those tightened down. Everything's tightened down. Our RCAs are plugged in. The amplifier is grounded. Power is hooked up. Remote is hooked up. Go back to the front of the vehicle, hook up the fuse as well as the battery, give it a test, make sure all of our speakers are playing, our subwoofers playing, make sure we have correct balance and fade, and then we can start wrapping up and cleaning up all our wiring. So as far as the fuse holder, what we're gonna need for that is a three millimeter Allen head wrench, as well as a 12 millimeter socket for the battery. So first we'll go ahead and just loosen up the two screws that hold the wire ferrules in place. So we'll start here, getting that one in and then tightened. Giving it a little tug, make sure we can go ahead and grab our other side. Get that one in and tightened. Okay, giving them a little tug, make sure go ahead and put the cover back on. So now that's all back together. 12 millimeter bolt on the battery. Now you're going to see a spark when you put that on for the first time. Don't be afraid of that. Go ahead and tighten that back down. And then you have a, one of a couple different ways to mount it. It'll come with a piece of industrial Velcro. You can just set that right on top of your fuse box, press that down, make sure it doesn't come off. Once you're done with that, just go over, check everything, make sure you cut your wire ties, make sure it's wire tied enough to stay out of the way of anything that's hot or anything that could burn it. Uh, once you're done with that, you can go ahead, close your hood, and we'll hop back inside and give our amplifier a test. Before we wrap up the installation of our kicker amplifier, let's go ahead, turn our vehicle on. Give it a test, make sure our balance and fade is correct, make sure we can hear our subwoofer and see how it sounds. And we can check balance and fade. So left front. see make sure our subwoofers on yep. and our subwoofer yep subwoofer is working perfectly so give it a listen
dramatic improvement over the JBL factory system. So now that we're pretty much satisfied with how it sounds, uh, we'll go over the amp and gain settings next, and then we will wire tie and get the amplifier all mounted and cleaned up. And then we can start putting it back together. So let's go over some of the controls on this kicker amplifier. First, we have our fader control either in or out, we're gonna leave it in. We have our high level or low level in, we're gonna leave it as it is for low level for RCAs. Next here is our sub input. So since we are running RCAs, we're gonna have that pushed in for subwoofer. So up here, we have our gain and crossovers for our front. So since we're running factory sub and speakers, we're gonna go ahead and leave those gains down just a hair, set the white dot to about nine o'clock as you're looking at it. And as far as crossover, we're gonna turn that to about nine o'clock as well. Same thing for the rear section, gain about nine o'clock and crossover at about nine o'clock as well. And as far as the subwoofer, we have gain, we have our crossover frequency and then we have a bass boost. So again, factory subwoofer, we're gonna keep it turned down. If you have an aftermarket subwoofer, you can turn it up louder, just depending on how loud you like to listen to it. So, but we're gonna leave that at about nine o'clock. We're gonna turn our crossover to about 10, and we're gonna go ahead and just leave our bass boost off, because uh, we don't wanna put any extra power into that factory subwoofer that we don't have to. So now that those are all set, we can get our amp into position and we can start cleaning up all of our wires from our amp all the way up through. So we have our wire ties, we have our cutters. So let's go ahead and just get it all cleaned up, make it as nice as possible. So now we've got our amp wires all bundled and cleaned up. We're gonna go ahead and mount the amplifier. We're gonna be using the industrial strength Velcro. We'll attach four of those to the bottom of the amplifier and then get the amplifier mounted down. So let's go ahead and mount the industrial Velcro to the bottom of the amp. You go ahead flip the amp over. Now you can do this earlier in the installation as well if you want to do it before you get all your wires put in. So we got all four of those on. So I'm actually going to reorientate this amplifier with the gain and level controls facing out towards the passenger side so I can gain access to them at any time without having to remove the passenger seat. So for that, go ahead and spin it around. Just like that. Get it placed somewhere just like that. Give it a little wiggle. So now it's attached to the carpet. Just make sure none of our wires are in the way. Now our amp's mounted, but we can also gain access to the side here to change any levels or crossover settings that we may want to in the future. So now that the amp is secured, we can go ahead and start putting everything back together. Start with the dash pieces to get back together. Go ahead and click them in. And then we can grab our top. Just line that up, push that in. Everything's all tidied up. Now again, you do not have to remove your seat. You can always have it lean back. We did remove the seat, just give you a better visualization of the amplifier install. So, but if you did remove your seat, now it'd be time to go ahead and put it back in, get it all secured down. Uh, you're gonna tighten it to 27 foot pounds as is factory spec. So let's go ahead and grab that seat and get it installed. Gently get your 
seat in. Then we want to go ahead and get all three plugs plugged back in. White will go to white. Gray will go to gray. And yellow will go to yellow. Make sure you hear that click. Then you're going to want to line up the two alignment pins on the front of the seat with the alignment pins that are in the floor. So just gently, gently get that lined up. Drop in there. And we can start our two front bolts. Couple turns on them. Then we can move to the back of the seat and get those two bolts in and tighten down. Now back at the back of the seat, you can see we have plenty of room underneath for ventilation for our amplifier. So we can grab our two bolts, get those started. But you wanna make sure you get, you don't cross thread them. And then you can grab your socket wrench or your impact gun. Get those tightened down. Then don't forget to put on your covers. So now we'll just slide the seat back to access the front two bolts. Again, it's 27 foot pounds to factory spec. So now we can move on to replacing the sill plate as well as the kick panel. So in the disassembly portion, when we pulled our kick panel out, the two pins stayed in. So we'll get those out now. Just gently wiggle them out. If you have a panel popper, that's fine. That'll work. So there's the one. The other is up here behind the, the ground. Pop that one out. So on our kick panel, those two will slide in with the flat side towards the open side. Just like that. Then we can slide it in, making sure we get it over the bolt. So we're over the bolt. Push that in. Get our retainer push that on get the sill plate on you'll have four locator pins two in the front two in the rear just line those up like that and push down all locked in now that we're done with the reassembly of the truck we can hop back in and hear the difference between the stock jbl amplifier and our new kicker five channel amplifier so let's take a final listen and make sure we're happy with how everything sounds Turn some volume up. Now that's a dramatic difference between our new kicker amp and the factory JBL amp. I can actually hear the subwoofer now. The highs are crisper and clearer. The subwoofer sounds absolutely amazing. And I actually hear some mid bass coming out of these doors. So if you have any questions about this bundle or any of our other great bundles, please visit us at trailgridpro.com. Please like and subscribe to our YouTube channel. And as always, have a blast out there.